Oh, oh my gosh. I don't know what it is, but it feels good. What? What? Is we got two. Two for one, baby. We're about to go fishing, but first we got to get the engine to turn on. I have a dead battery. My jump starter is also dead. So this is what you, this is how you start a boat without a battery. Ooh, that's sticky. What you do is you want to spin this thing so you tie a rope around it. You ready for this, babe? Bye. Three, two, one. All right, we're gonna try that again. I'm gonna give it an extra couple pumps just in case. Okay. Here we go, fingers majorly crossed. Okay. Three, two, one. Damn it. Come on. Three, two, one. Ah, <laughs> oh, yeah, two strokes. Gotta love them. We won't be turning the engine off today for, I would say, kind of obvious reasons. The game plan is we're gonna run out of Key Largo. We're gonna head to the reef's edge and we're gonna just drift between 50 to 200 feet of water because we're gonna try to get on some sailfish today, which I've never caught a sailfish. So what about you, Caitlin? I've never caught one. So we got two people on a boat that's barely floating that have never caught sailfish and we're gonna try to catch sailfish today. <laughs> How many fish are we gonna get today? At least five, I think. I'm five, five fish? Mm -hmm. Caitlin thinks we're gonna get five fish in the box. Let's get to it then. edge we're in 15 feet of water right here and then just over there it's 80 feet of water I decided we're not gonna anchor we're just gonna drift I got the chum bag out chum bag out we already got yellowtail behind the boat Caitlin's about to throw a rod out after all she's got five fish to catch hopefully while drifting we can get the ballyhoo behind the boat catch some live ballyhoo and then we'll run offshore and maybe get that sailfish or something hey Caitlin Let's see this little thing. So we got a live pilchard on the Freeliner J hook. Go on, toss it on out there. Go on. Go on. Toss it as How far, far you as you can. As far as I can? Yeah, into the chump slick back there. All that sound effects. What? Hey, yeah. Oh, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, girl. Look him out in. Woo! This is this thing? Mangrove snapper. Oh, look at him all white like that. That's cool. Yeah. Want to measure him? He looks, <laughs> he looks legal to me. Really? Yeah. Oh. He's 13 inches. They only got to be 12 inches. What do you want to do with them, Caitlin? Your choice. You're the one that took the lamb, so. You're the one that said we need to put five fish on the boat. Do you want to keep them or you want to let them go? It's pretty little. We'll let them go. Normally when there's no fish in the box, I don't like to let things go, but uh, we have high, started. we have high hopes, yeah. <laughs> if we don't catch anything the rest of the day, Caitlin, remember who said throw it back in the water. I know. I'm gonna give me some, some live ballyhoo. There we go. Net deployed. Come on, ballyhoo. I got some. All right. Got some bait going in. Doesn't feel big. I think it's a yellowtail. Haha. <laughs> Look at a little boy. It's a lamb. Oh, he's actually yeah. on the right size. There we go. We're keeping this one. First fish in the box. 
We already got a bunch of ballyhoo, a bunch of ballyhoo behind the boat. We'll fish this another 15 minutes and then we're gonna head on offshore. Aw. Oh, it's coming back for it. Oh yeah, I got one. What is that? A grouper. Oh my goodness. So uh, cute. That's a rock kind, I think. Look at this little pretty guy. So Too small. Away he goes. Dun, dun, dun. Now we're gonna go offshore. We've had enough of this shallow reef fishing. We wanna catch something real big. We are out in 190 feet of water. I just put the chum bag out. I just threw one live ballyhoo out and we're gonna throw a second live ballyhoo out on my new sailfish rod. This rod's so new, it still has the price tag on it. You want a good rod for a good price, get the BG 5000 combo. I paid $140 for it at West Marine. It's got 30 pound mono going to six feet of 60 pound fluorocarbon leader going straight to a nice fat circle hook. We're gonna take a ballyhoo, take ourselves a nice little ballyhoo here, and we're just gonna pop the nose off and just kind of hook them right in the lower lip. Just like that. And we'll chuck them on out there in the chum slick. Hiya! And I guess now we kind of wait. I'll be happy if kingfish show up. Anything that gets the rod is screaming. Fish out! I see the fish. Yep. Oh my god, that might be a mutton, babe. Okay. okay. I'm gonna just hand line them. Okay. You can stop reeling right there. Oh no. What do you mean, what do? It's a grouper. Oh. This would have been great oh, last week. I thought he was a mutton. Nice, red grouper. It's a good looking fish. Right? Now we gotta send them back down. We're gonna try exactly what we just did, but instead of 190 feet of water, we're gonna head to 130 feet of water. Grouper are out of season, so that was a little unfortunate. We sent them back down. Maybe the next one will be a mutton or a sailfish. Yeah, I go. Oh! Oh my gosh! Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know what it is, but it feels good. It's got a nice like kick to it. This was uh, on the bottom. We're in 127 feet of water. We got two free lines out with live ballyhoo on them. And then we got this rod that's on the bottom that was drifting along the bottom. I'm finessing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Here it comes. I see color. Okay. Uh, where's that net at? Right oh, babe, I think we got ourselves a mutton. I'm only gonna be able to do. It's okay. Oh. What? What? In we the... got two. Two for one, baby. Two for one. Oh my gosh! I go. <laughs> On the stinger rig. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Look how he got hooked right in the freaking head. Ooh. Oh, he got chomped on the way up, probably by a really big grouper. He looks like 17 and a half to me. 17 inches. Yeah, he gets to go. Bam, oh, he, he took off. I can't believe we got two red grouper as soon as they're out of season. Mm -hmm. And he looks like his air bladder is full. So we'll just poke it. Give it a little poke so it runs out here. And that way he can sink back down. See him go? He gone! That was cool. Two fish. Grouper and a mutton? What? We only have about an hour of daylight left and I got ants in my pants and we haven't got another hit since that grouper and mutton. So I'm gonna try to save the day and get another of those four fish in the box. No, it's okay. 
We're gonna move to 70 feet of water, put the chum back out, and hopefully get some yellowtail behind the boat. Maybe a sailfish will come into 70 <laughs> feet of water. Let's do it. 52 feet of water we are in now. One free liner rod, one bottom drifting rod, another free liner rod with live ballyhoo, and then Caitlin here has got the free liner rig with a split shot weight, just slowly sending down a thread herring. So if we don't catch anything now. New careers. Yeah, we're, we're changing careers. I'm gonna change my career. <laughs> Get it, babe. Get on. Oh. Come on. I got a fish on. See it taking line. Oh, dick. Am I on? I can't tell if I'm on. I think I got a fish. Oh, yeah. Woo From the depths. Ooh, what do we got here? Is that a yellow tail? Woo hoo. Yeah, baby. Awesome. Yeah. I think I might have another fish. Oh, yeah. Yeah! Woohoohoo! Oh, this one feels kind of all right. Oh, mutton snapper! <laughs> Holy smokes, a little mutton. Look at that, pretty boy. Not big enough, but still a pretty fish. Oh. The sun is falling like a rock and we're making our way home, but we're not giving up. Our final last hoorah. We're trolling these three separate little feathers and we're trolling them way behind the boat. On that rod, this rod, and then that rod. And we're just going over the patch reefs anywhere between 30 feet all the way into 10 feet of water. But whether or not we get a bite, we are sailing into the sunset together. Oh, hey. Okay. So Look at that. And there we have it. Back at home, back in the kitchen, two yellowtail snapper that I'm about to turn into something fancy. Snapper tartar. Never done it before. It'll be a fancy appetizer to some ribs that I'm about to throw on the grill, but let's make some tartar. So to make the tartar, we're gonna fillet the yellowtail snapper and I'm going to put the snapper on the grill and smoke it for not long, maybe 10 minutes, just to give it a little bit of smokiness. And we want it raw, we don't want to cook the fish. Skin the guy. Oops, looks like I messed up. Bet there's a piece of skin on the back. Yep. <laughs> That's okay. Problem solved. Just like that. Hello. So we'll throw him on the smoker along with the other three fillets, and then we'll cube it up and make some tartare four beautiful yellowtail fillets. But first, we're gonna take some finely chopped potatoes that I chopped up here. One potato chopped up into little cubes. We'll put that in some, I was gonna say boiling water, but that water ain't boiling. <laughs> but we'll just cook these guys, let them get hard. I mean soft. <laughs> I'm backwards today. Since we're gonna smoke the fish, I'm also gonna smoke these ribs. This is not a ribs catch and cook, but I wanna show you guys that I am the master at meat just like fish. We'll start with the fish. Now, we want the fish to stay raw. We don't wanna fully cook this. After all, it's tartare. So here we got the Traeger. We're using some cherry wood pellets and it's smoking at a cool 90 degrees. So I'll just place them right up here in the front. One rack of ribs will go in the back. And one rack of ribs will go right here in the front. 
So the fish, we're only gonna smoke for about five or 10 minutes, but the ribs, we're gonna smoke for three hours, then we're gonna wrap them in foil, cook them for another one hour, take them out of the foil, and then cook them for one more hour. So the ribs take six hours. If you wanna see the full video on how to make the best freaking ribs in the world fall off the bone meat ribs, leave a comment below. But let's make the tartare. I'm like, why aren't the potatoes even boiling? Thing ain't even plugged in. Now we're gonna take a cucumber. We only need a quarter of a cucumber. Peel it. We'll cut that off right about there. Cut that in half. Take a spoon and remove the seeds on the inside. And then we're gonna finally dice the cucumber. There's our pile of finely chopped cucumber. Now we're gonna wanna salt it nice and well. And let that sit for about 10 minutes. Got our potatoes strained, looking good. All right, that fish looks perfect. Hallelujah. This fish is, looks real done. It's still a little raw. It has a real nice smoky smell to it. We'll chop that up just like everything else. Bam, there's our snapper. Oh, the cat has arrived. Take some of this fish. Little Captain Elliot. Take a paper towel and dry the cucumbers off quarter of a red pepper. Bam, we'll chop and dice him up. Just two more things left, a little bit of parsley. And last but not least, some lemon zest. We'll just take a potato peeler. Get all that zest. I'll dice up that lemon a little bit more. Kablam! And just like that, we have all the ingredients, almost all the ingredients, to make the tartare. We still have to make a sauce, but we'll go ahead and add the potatoes, the red pepper, parsley, cucumber, the fish, obviously, Ooh, and then the lemon zest. And we can't forget the mayo. I want to add about a half a cup of mayo, which I'm going to eyeball out. Don't you me? I eyeball everything. <laughs> Once you become a professional chef, you just start okay. eyeballing. You throw away all measuring cups. They're yeah. completely useless. But I'll start with that for now. Mix it all up in here. We're going to need a little bit more mayo, I think. Well, maybe not. Hold on. This is why you eyeball. And then you want to salt and pepper it to taste. I'll try a little bit here right now. Wow, that's actually way better than I thought it was gonna be. Really? Like playing with that? I don't think it needs anything. No. Nope. I'll do a tiny bit of salt and a tiny bit of pepper, but I think it was perfect. Stir that one more time. And then you want to let this sit in the fridge for at least an hour to let the flavors marinate into each other. Some people even leave it overnight, but one hour is plenty. We got the yelltail snapper tartare in the fridge, and now we're going to make a, a sauce that we're gonna put on top of it. It's a nice spoonful of horseradish, some chopped parsley, some sour cream, a nice hefty serving of sour cream, eh, a little more. Take a lemon, cut it in half, squeeze that lemon in there. Oh, <laughs> that got all over me. And then we'll top it off with a little bit of cayenne. Ooh. We'll mix all that up in there. And just like the tuna tartare, we're gonna marinate that. Wait, before we do anything, let's give this a try. Imagine feeding a baby this. Oh Open gosh. wide. Mm. 
Once again, way better than I thought it was gonna taste. This is gonna be interesting. I'm stoked. All right, time to merit. Let all this marinate in the fridge, and then we'll see you guys at the table in about one hour. Okay, it's been like two hours. Let's make our snapper tartare circles. I don't know. Cakes? Shape. Our, our snapper tartare shapes. Okay. okay. Oh, yes. So we want to fill this up, but it might not come out. So we're going to grease the inside with a little bit of olive oil. Oh, sh <laughs> Came out faster than I thought. I got oh, some in there, too. Okay. Well. Plenty. There we go. Now we're going to stuff this bowl up with goodness. I'm pretty excited. How are you feeling about this? Yeah, I mean, I was a little nervous at first. I'm like, oh, some of the stuff I don't really eat normally, but it's actually looking more exciting. And I'm just going to go for it. Yeah, you go for it. You go for it, girl. All right, you think if I sl slam that down, it'll come out? Yeah. Let the record show that this is my first tuna tartare cake I have ever made. I'm going to slap it on here and hopefully it comes out. Ready? This might be loud. Oh, you're gonna like really slam it. Don't break like the bowl or anything though. Oh, it's stuck. It, it, it didn't come out. Oops. Hold on, I'll get it. Here we go. Oh, it's coming. <laughs> hey -o! Yay, perfect! Wow. Good job. Okay, and then we take the sauce that we made. Drizzle it on top, like that. Okay, now we're gonna get real fancy real quick. We're gonna cut an avocado in half. Don't worry, I'm professional at using a knife. Now, we're gonna slice this avocado. This is Caitlin's trick. Oh, okay. I was thinking like the other way, but that's fine, that works good. Okay, oh like, man, you you're know, right. Like, I'm cutting them the wrong way. Yeah, that's all right, it's, it's the same thing. All right, well. I, I have now learned my mistake. Hmm, it's, it'll be perfect. Okay. And maybe like... Now make it look pretty. Hold on, I want to make them look like little like, like leaves. Maybe. Okay, well, it's not as pretty as I thought it was going to be. All right, are we ready for this? Yeah. Here we go. First time eating, first time making tuna tartare, or snapper tartare. Let's, I'm gonna do a bite with a little bit of, a little bit of everything, yeah. Avocado, sauce. Here we go. I feel like like a Beverly Hills girl. <laughs> That's like eating real fancy caviar and drinking champagne. You are. You are so fancy. Don't even. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna have a little bite before you have yours. Okay. Mm. Damn! All right. My turn. Your turn, Caitlin. It's a big bite, so I better hope I like it. That's really good. Oh my gosh. Wow. I was prepared to like be like, oh man, this isn't gonna work. Amazing. Seriously. Good job. Thank you. High five. Good job, sweet pea. I can cook <laughs> a little bit, which reminds me, I got some ribs on the Traeger. How many racks? Two racks. I got racks on racks on racks. <laughs> you finished that. Sweetheart. I'm gonna check on the Traeger real quick. That snapper tartare was on fire. If you're looking for something new to make, make that. Give it to your family and they will love you. Also, those ribs, man, they came out looking good. 
the bones pulled right out of them. The meat had a nice smoke line and melted in your mouth. I've been cooking on my Traeger almost every day since I got it. I've been cooking pork butts, fish, ribs, steaks, vegetables, all sorts of stuff. A lot of trial and error, but I think maybe soon I'll do some really good uh, how to cook videos with some red meats. I guess that means I should probably go hunting, get me some meat. If y'all like any of my recipes, or use any of my fishing rigs and you catch fish with them and you got an Instagram account, send over a picture at our Instagram account at South Florida Fishing Channel. Send us a DM in your picture and we'll repost it on our page. Give you a shout out because we love our fans and when our fans let us know that they love us, it's awesome when I see you guys using my fishing rigs or cooking my recipes, it's just freaking great. If you like this video, definitely push that thumbs up button. If you're not subscribed, boy, what the heck are you doing? Go on and push that subscribe button. If you want the exact recipe for the snapper tartare, I'll put it in the video description below and all the fishing rigs that we used in this video will be in the video description below. Look down there, it's down there somewhere. Thanks again for watching and cheers everybody.